Morning, everybody. Cool. Day 16, here we go. Um, <clears throat> next two days, uh, we're gonna continue just talking about these ideas of um, stir. Uh, so, a lot more practice time, just for your information. But let's just play a little game, you know, across the Zoom session. I think it's very important, as I've noted, to try and put these four words to memory, just because, again, as the, you know, as, you know, you spend more time practicing over the course of this challenge, but also hopefully over the course of your life, and you're spending more time in this environment, these four concepts will arise and the importance the importance of entering flow state i don't think is stated um through many through a lot of different meditative lineages but the discovery of flow the analysis of flow is proving that the transformative nature of this thing that you're you enjoy or that you're curious of that i enjoy that i'm curious of that many people are sort of working towards it depends entirely on entering that state. Uh, so I suppose the, the core lesson is that all sits are not equal. Um, all meditators you know, aren't, aren't really doing the same thing. And if we are looking for change, which is not, which is not uh, an attribute of mindfulness, again, it's an attribute of people seeking flow state, um, but a lot of people that enter mindfulness or enter meditation are also looking for change. If you are looking for change, change in the personality, change in, change in the way you conduct yourself, change in your productivity levels, change in your presence levels, uh, understanding stirs is critical. So, S. Just in your own head, what is S? Selflessness. So when you're meditating, just like yesterday, when you're meditating, it's, it's valuable to start recognizing the, the absence of, of self-talk, the absence of um, self-centered ruminations, the disconcern with the self. And so what this might feel like is you're sitting there and you're just very into the sound of the bird chirping outside the window. You're very into the feeling of the carpet underneath your body shifting yourself, right? That actual choice of shifting into things that are not necessarily you. Even the weight or pressure of your hands on your laps. And while it's your body, it's not sort of you in the form of the identity. That willingness to shift the thought um, into non-self is, is important. So S, selflessness. T, what is T? Timelessness. And so, Back to sort of um, the concept of, of right effort, all that that, all that that branch of Buddhism is expressing is that we, at a certain point in our maturity, we have to start really um, managing our minds and being concerned with our minds. The same way, at least for me, my teens, very dirty room, very messy room, and then eventually you grow up, you're like, okay, you know, it's, it's fun to have dirty clothes everywhere, uh, but now it's less fun. Let me, let me extend my, my intention to clean my room. And now, you know, in general, I feel as adults, rooms are clean, homes are clean, because we understand that that's part of our, you know, part of our duty uh, as mature human beings. Eventually, that same concern emerges for the mind. And this is what's meant by right effort. And why I'm saying this is, it's always just about shifting, shifting intention, shifting energy. And so if you're sitting there and you are worried about time, worried about how many minutes are left, worried about how many minutes you've been meditating, if that's a pattern in your practice, you have to start concerning yourself and assuming responsibility over these thoughts, these neural pathways, and saying, no, I'm not going to worry about time. You have to have that counter thought. I'm going to come back to my breath. I'm just going to choose to not think about that time, that time factor. So T is timelessness and that little pivoting, that constant little pivoting away from how many seconds are left, how many minutes are left, how many breaths are left <clears throat> is very important. So again, timelessness. E, effortlessness. It is very, very easy. Allow yourself to understand that 
that it's easy. I've gotten a lot of uh, emails about sharing with me that it's not easy, that some of you are finding it very difficult to be mindful. And as I've expressed, it's just your expectations. It's just your, your, your clinging to something that is not arising now. So if this is proving to be difficult, you have to acknowledge maybe the beginning of your work today, uh, you have to solidify what is it that you're expecting from the present moment? Because it's that expectation, maybe it's peace, maybe it's pure thoughtlessness. Um, what are you expecting from the present moment that is not arising now? That is a thought. And once you recognize that thought, instead of subconsciously sort of projecting it onto the moment and then being sort of disappointed with the moment because it doesn't have this subconscious aspect that you're wishing for, um, that, will, that will help you. And then you will realize mindfulness is just about sitting down with what arises, as, as has been shared. And that if I can do that deeply and not think about time while I'm just sitting down and not think about myself or my subconscious expectations while just sitting down, then I will also enter flow. And that is a powerful space. The last is E, effortlessness, and then R, da -da -da, richness. It is sweet. It is beautiful to sit down. It is enchanting to be here. There is... You know, if, if this is the, the aspect of stir that attracts you, um, mindfulness and meditation in general is a romance. It is a, a, a love affair um, with reality itself. And that you are sitting with one thing. You are sitting with the now. And so as a mindfulness practitioner, all meditators, but mindfulness, especially in, in the West, is really sort of coined this concept here and now or the now. Um, you want to consider that's what, you know, that is, that is what you're building intimacy with. That the now, as dynamic is, as involved as it is, it is a thing to be adored and a thing that adores. You smile at it, it smiles at you. And when you start to appreciate, you know, just like, I'm going to go and hang out with my grandparents. I'm going to go be with my, my mom or my dad or my brother or my best friend. I'm going to feed that, that relationship of love and there's intrinsic joy in doing that. Um, in terms of your meditation practice, consider it the same thing. You are nurturing a relationship with a living thing, um, the now. And once the now becomes almost divinized in the mind, you're sitting with it as it presents itself, I think will become more satisfying. All these are concepts Right? But there are concepts that enrich our experience of mindfulness and there are concepts that disrupt our experience of mindfulness. And so again, S-T-E-R are four concepts that once you understand prove to be very um, powerful and add a lot of momentum to the progression of your ability. Okay, cool. So here we go. Let's do this. And so as you're getting ready, just to clarify the two different mindsets one more time, <clears throat> and hopefully what we can find is, is a harmony between these two sort of conflicting attitudes, mindfulness does not disavow flow state. It does not disavow hyper-focus, full absorption. But it doesn't reach for it either. When it arises, it arises. When it dissolves, it dissolves. Flow or no flow, the moment, the now, the thing that the mindfulness practitioner adores is still there. Flow state study is different. Can I manage my mind with enough skill to consciously choose full absorption? And so in the beginning of our session, we'll work together to explore, stir, and see if we can shift in small ways mentally and see in that small shifting if there's an effect. After that, we will 
settle into pure mindfulness. Sit without objection. Sit without specific intention. And see if these qualities of flow, these aspects of stir arise on their own. Slow down your breath, eyes are closed. Relax your face, relax your jaw, relax your shoulders, and again, slow down the breath. Everything is physical. Every thought we have is a trail in the valleys of our mind. And every time we have such a thought, any thought, that trail is walked. And that path is deepened, further embedded into our inner valleys. And so right effort, the sixth, the sixth step in Buddha's Eightfold Path is about claiming responsibility on what trails and what paths we walk within our mind. So a little experiment, right now in this breath, choose to ignite the trail of happiness. Do you have that ability? And choose to ignite the trail of gratitude. Do you have that ability? Can you feel a difference somewhere in your mind or body? The difference between gratitude and happiness. Can you ignite hope? And so this is the reality of right effort. It is that willingness to make that internal choice and choose a better thought.
And that same ability to choose a different thought when utilized in the context of stir, more than likely will support our ability to enter flow more regularly. And in that, transform our neurology more consistently when we practice. Because again, all practices are not equal. All practitioners are not equal. It really matters what's happening inside. So take a second to think about yourself. Think about your life. Ride the wave of this natural negativity bias. We all have worries. We all have insecurities. We all have concerns. Just recognize one. It is also a flower in the mind. It is an also an experience within the now. You don't have to disavow. It's there. And so you're on the thought of yourself, of your life. And now shift to a sound outside of you or feel neutrally a sensation on your body. And understand that that shifting from a concern of your personal life to an observation of the now is selflessness. And one more time. Think of some other detail about your life, positive or negative, something you have to do later. And so this is a self-centered thought and it is hewing your moment. Feel that it is narrowing your bandwidth. Now shift again to an objective observation. It can be your body. It can certainly be anything around you. And from a self-centered perspective, now you are in a selfless perspective. This is more about the moment, more about the bird, more about this body, more about the ground, more about the clothes on this body, more about the air, more about the now.
timelessness. Entertain your impatience. Try to guess what time it is now. And feel the satisfaction that comes from ruminating on time. Feel the satisfaction that arises from trying to resolve the puzzle of time. Our lives are now broken down to the minute. This wasn't always the case. Time was an invention. But now we are wired to be concerned with our minutes. And when we lose track of this very important variable of our reality, we become nervous. And so to think of time is to think of solutions to this nervousness, this unknowing. You can feel that as you think about time. Some part of the brain is stabilized. True presence is a deep ocean. It is an expansive landscape. And so from thinking of time and minutes, come back to objective observation. Attempt to feel the infinity of now, the minuteless reality of now. And that in your being, through your non-doing, you have arrived. Choosing to steer away from concern of minutes and hours and days and dates is right effort. It is right to be in the timeless ocean of presence. It is right to not be concerned with ourselves or less concerned with ourselves especially while meditating. That is right. Now effortlessness. Think of all the things you've done 
that are taxing on your body, on your spirit, on your mind. Think of the things you have to do just today that will involve a hustle, will involve a grind, will involve exhaustion. And then return to this moment and realize the only grind is your thoughts, more than likely your expectations of what you want this moment to be. The only effort is entirely in your own head. Slow down the breath, allow yourself to just sit here and you will find that mindfulness is the easiest thing in the world. It is as easy as having coffee with a friend. It is as easy as enjoying a beautiful sunset. It is as easy as taking a deep breath. final aspect of flow, R, richness. At this point, the familiar instruction, strike the bell of joy. Ignite the trail of gratitude. Choose to be happy to be here. Choose to be thrilled that you are feeding this romantic relationship with reality. That you are mind and body present to what your world is as it arises in real time in this breath. Feel the achievement in that. And while the rest of the world hustles for thoughts and for achievement and for duty, somehow you have found an open space in which you can feel achieved through pure being.
So make the right choice. Every breath ignites joy or happiness or gratitude. In that every breath is the practice itself. And in that every breath, which translates the sweetness of mindfulness, pulls you deeper into presence. Try to feel this. Three more breaths. Last breath, slow down. Remember timelessness. Last breath, the day is coming. Stay with selflessness. Last breath, duty is calling. Enjoy your final moment of effortlessness. With an inhale, open your eyes.